good amount of sunshine for the rest of your Tuesday. Maybe a sprinkle or two along the I-29 corridor toward the evening commute, but beyond that, not bad. Not even all that windy either. A low to mid-60s in many locations outside of western South Dakota will be stuck largely in the 50s. And a pretty calm night on our hands as well. Partly to at times mostly cloudy though. Lows on either side of 40. Then the wind comes back and so does an opportunity for rain. We'll talk about that coming up on the Till That Midday in Kilva Wind. Starts right now. Live from Killoland Media Group. Midday in Killoland. Sioux Falls police are investigating a fiery hit and run on the eastern side of the city. And former President Donald Trump receives backlash from both parties after he weighs in on abortion access. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. Voting opened at 7 a.m. today in Sioux Falls, but Mayor Paul Tenhaken is concerned about the possibility of low voter turnout. Tenhaken posted on X, formerly known as Twitter, quote, no level of government impacts your day-to-day -day life more than local government. Please find time to get to the polls today. Polls will remain open until 7 o'clock tonight to pick city councilors and school board members. City and county officials want to remind voters to double-check polling locations and bring your state-issued ID with you. Sioux Falls police are looking for a driver following a fiery crash on the east side of the city. Investigators say the driver of a pickup crashed into another pickup on East 26th Street this morning, not far from Bonson Avenue. The driver then got out of the vehicle and ran, while the pickup started on fire, causing significant damage. The hit and driver is described as a white man in his 50s or 60s. Police say the other driver had minor injuries. If you have inf information on the crash, you're asked to call police. Weather out there is pretty pleasant. Before too long, we'll be talking about the wind again, though, Adam. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just not going anywhere anytime soon. But that's hello wind for you. At least we have the sunshine in place. So late to the party, but glad it came all the same. So enjoy it if you can. 56 at Falls Park with a west wind at 11 miles per hour. Beautiful afternoon to get outside if you have the chance to do so. And it's also not all that windy either. It's a pity that that break isn't going to be lasting very long. There's Lake Madison. Again, beautiful blue sky above. A little breezy along the waters, but still not all that terrible considering yeah, how windy it's probably going to be getting on Wednesday. Not to mention uh, the chance for rain that will come back into the picture. We're at 52 in Brookings as well as Watertown. 59 for Aberdeen and Pier, 58 here on Phillip and Rapid City, but 40s though toward the hills, Custer and Spearfish at 46 apiece. There's the wind. It's breezy, certainly, but 10 to 15 miles per hour out of the west in many locations. We can handle that. The exception being up toward Buffalo, they have their sustained west wind at 25 miles per hour. But beyond that, there just is not much to talk about right now, and that's quite frankly OK, considering everything that's been happening over the last couple of days. We need a little time to dry out, and well, that's exactly what we're going to be getting right down to the freezing. A little bit of time. Our next system will come around as we head toward the day on Wednesday, more so later in the day, so morning plans will still be all right. Uh, the rest of your afternoon today, mid 60s for southeastern Kelvin, maybe an isolated sprinkle toward the evening commute along the I-29 corridor and points east, but that will be an exception to the overall dry rule. Same goes for northeastern Kelvin, low to mid 60s and a healthy mix of sun and clouds out there. Uh, to the west, 60s outside of the hills and for that matter, the Wyoming and Montana borders. We'll get to the mid 60s toward the Missouri River Valley, but from hot springs to Buffalo and all points in between, you'll be stuck in the 50s, but still that's a step in the right direction. We'll talk about the rest of your seven day forecast, including a rather warm weekend outlook all coming up in a little bit. Thank you, Adam. If you're looking to run for a cause, the Carbs for Kids 5K and Bake Sale is Saturday at Cherry Rock Park in Sioux Falls. The South Sioux Falls Kiwanis Club is hosting the event. The money raised will stay local and benefit children in a variety of ways. We've helped organizations like the Toy Lending Library, um, Feeding South Dakota, um, the Banquet. So lots of organizations throughout Sioux Falls benefit from the funds raised. The dollars don't just go to one single organization. Uh, it's special to see the multitude of different organizations that we do serve. The Carbs for Kids 5K and Bake Sale is 9 o'clock Saturday morning at Cherry Rock Park. The 5K runs $20 while the bake sale is a free will donation. We'll tell you what kind of treats will be up for grabs tonight on Kelloland News.
Phillips. You may not recognize his name, but a lot of us will recognize some of his artwork. Dave Fuller, who teaches art at Parker High School, has spent the past 38 years painting murals and mascots in area gymnasiums. But at 65, he's now planning on retiring at the end of the school year. I've, I've painted a lot of gyms in South Dakota and the surrounding states and in retirement. I, I plan on doing a little bit of that, too, you know, and uh, it's been a a great uh, summer job for me. Uh, some, some summers I make about as much as I do teaching. You're going to hear more about Fuller and how he changed the way students in Parker look at art. It's tonight's Eye on Kelloland at 10. Former U.S. President Donald Trump is taking heat from Democrats and Republicans. It's over a campaign video where the presumptive GOP nominee said each state should decide its own abortion laws. Ed O'Keefe is at the White House with more on this key issue in the election. Former President Donald Trump still won't say whether he supports a proposed national abortion ban. Instead, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both and whatever they decide must be the law. That means he backs the 14 states that have passed near total bans on access to abortion procedures since Roe versus Wade was struck down, and others, like his home state of Florida, that have signed six-week bans into law. On Monday, former Vice President Mike Pence called Trump's failure to endorse a national ban a slap in the face to the millions of pro-life Americans who voted for him in 2016 and 2020. Marjorie Denenfelser is president of a leading anti-abortion group. I was surprised and disappointed uh, in the context of the great opportunity that he has uh, made, made real in this country. Trump campaigned on a promise to nominate conservative Supreme Court justices who would overturn Roe, something he now boasts about. I was proudly the person responsible. Denenfelser spoke with Trump by phone Monday and says he could still change his mind. I still see an open door for signing a 15-week bill if it came to him. President Biden's trying to make that exact same point. If MAGA Republicans put a federal ban on his desk, he'd sign it. Within hours of Trump's announcement, the Biden campaign released this new ad about a Texas woman denied abortion services after a miscarriage. She says she now may not be able to get pregnant again. <laughs> Ed O'Keefe, CBS News.